Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's episode of The Golden Bolt. My name is Kevin. Now, like I said in the last video, we're going to be tackling the classic Mega Man series this week, specifically Mega Man 1. How well does the Blue Bomber hold up 30 years later? Well, we're going to find out. Now, one little caveat before I do start. Though I'm holding up this box right here, I am not reviewing the PS2 Mega Man Anniversary Collection version of the game. I'm actually reviewing the PS4 version of the game through the Mega Man Legacy Collection. I just don't have a physical copy of that game, so, yeah. There are reasons why I'm reviewing that instead of this one, and I will get into those during the review. Now, let's get started. Let's touch on a little bit of backstory with Mega Man before we tackle the game itself. By the time Mega Man first hit shelves in 1987, Capcom was already one of the marquee third parties in gaming. When somebody brought forward the concept of Rockman, Capcom was already a trusted name on the NES, and they were willing to give the idea a shot. A Japanese development team of six people worked on Rockman for only a few months before they got it ready for launch. People widely credit Kieji Inafune as the father of the series, but in this game, he was just an artist who did the sprite work. He only became the lead on the series as the years went on. The game launched in both America and Japan simultaneously in December 1987, and while other Capcom games like Ghost and Goblins hit the NES first, Mega Man hit it best with a whopping- what? what? Only 800,000 sales? Is that- is that right? But this is a beloved franchise. How did it sell so poor? Oh, God. Sorry. Holy sh**. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why Mega Man didn't sell well. I wish I was kidding, but even Inafune, considered the father of the series, has blamed this cover for the game's performance. I mean, how did they even think that was a good idea? It's not even close. I mean, at least the other region covers were bad. Oh, oh, God, you're... You're kidding me, right? I mean, it's it's closer, but how? Okay, okay, see, that's better. Japan, for once, isn't the one with the weird cover art. Anyway, while Mega Man didn't perform that well, it did outperform expectations, and Capcom allowed a sequel to be produced, but only if the developers would do it in their free time and work on actual games in their main time. So, Mega Man 2 was a side project. I mean, that game must suck then, right? The story of Mega Man takes place in the year 2000X, with Dr. Light and his co-worker Dr. Wily sitting at the forefront of the scientific world. They've just created the world's first sentient robot known as Mega Man, and shortly thereafter they created six more robots to be used for general purposes and to improve the quality of human life. These six were called Robot Masters. However, Dr. Light has been the one credited most from this breakthrough, and Dr. Wily grows jealous. One night he reprograms all six robot masters to do his bidding and prepares to take over the world. When Dr. Light finds out, he sends Mega Man to stop Wily and save the Earth from the clutches of his own creation. And that's it. Mega Man wants an NES game. You didn't expect Shakespeare, right? There's not much to go off of here, so I won't even try to rate a story this shallow. There's simply not enough here for me to give it a fair score. If you want a more fleshed out version of this plot though, I strongly recommend you check out the RG Mega Man comics. It's really well done, I can't recommend it enough. Anyway, in lieu of a plot category, I'm going to judge the amount of content in this game. Mega Man has six levels to it, each defended by a robot master. These levels are approximately 10 minutes long at most, and always end with a fight with said robot master. When you take down a robot master, Mega Man absorbs that ability using his copy chip, and then he's able to use that ability at any other point during the game. This gives Mega Man a total of seven different powers that he can use at any point in this game. There's an eighth one in the game too, but I'll get into that later. Once you beat all six Robot Masters, you go to Dr. Wily's castle and take the fight to him. There are four more stages here which you have to take on back to back, culminating in a fight with Wily himself. Or, rather, his giant machines. For somebody who was banned from touching robotics, he's really good at building an entire castle and giant mech very quickly. Anyway, you take him down and he falls to his knees and begs for mercy. And that's it. Mega Man runs home as the credits play, and the game ends. All in all, it might last an hour from start to finish, maybe an hour and a half depending on how good you are, and any additional length is due to the game's poor mechanics or difficulty. There's very little replayability to Mega Man 1 as well, for a reason I'm going to dive into in a little bit, so once you're done, you're done, unless you want to go for a high score or something. Because of this, I really can't justify giving the game a higher score than bronze for its content. I know it's a game that's almost 30 years old, and I try to give it slack for that, but when a sequel comes out a year later and improves in every single way as a side project, I can't give it too much slack. If the comics were canon, I would judge those as additional material to the game, but they're not, so I have nothing to talk about when it comes to the story or the runtime of this game. That's not inherently a bad thing since this game is so old, but when the most I can talk about is this, that's bad. I almost feel bad saying this, but Mega Man 1 gets a bronze bolt for content. 
Like the story, the gameplay is also simple. You jump and you shoot. That's about it. Pretty much every enemy in the series can be taken down with Mega Man's standard buster shot. It might take a few hits, yeah, but the game is pretty much doable with just your standard loadout. The level layouts, while varied, always end up with Mega Man going through these gates to the Robot Master's boss room. However, for those of you that know Mega Man, this might look a bit different. In this game, there's still a challenge in the penultimate rooms, unlike in all the sequels where it's just a small hallway there to build tension. This feels like a pretty cheap way to take a few ticks of damage off the player's health bar, and while most of these aren't bad, it's something that definitely doesn't need to exist. It's just there to waste your time. See, Mega Man is hard. Really hard at times. And you only have three lives to do the entire level, normally without any semblance of a checkpoint until the very end. For some levels, like Gutsman, you've got these broken moving platforms that simply don't work the right way. See, if you walk off a platform in this game, or in this case get caught starting your jump just a frame late, most of the time you're going to fly down to the bottom of the screen several times faster than Mega Man's normal falling speed. So you have to jump here very early, and there's a thin window for when that platform becomes active again. So if you jump too early, you're dead, even if you land on the platform just as it's coming back up. But that's not the only broken thing in this game. In this stage, you have to navigate these disappearing platforms. These become a trademark for the series for all the wrong reasons. These platforms disappear and reappear in a set order, so you've got to sit there and memorize it before going onward. Now it's not that bad in this game, but in later ones, well, I'll touch on those when I get there. After this annoying waste of time section, you have these flying platforms that shoot at you. These were the bane of my existence in my first playthrough. For some reason, they just don't like to stay synced up correctly sometimes. Not all the time, just sometimes. But if you get a bad cycle, you're all but screwed unless you can make pixel-perfect jumps while dodging these bullets. It's just annoying, and that's what I would call this game in general, annoying. Even when you get past all these hazards, oftentimes with immediate death as the penalty for mistakes, you've got to get past these things. These guys will screw with your mind like nothing else. They touch you, and they take away a third of your health, and they will not follow any pattern to let you get past consistently. And they take way too many hits to die. So even after all these challenges, all you get is a checkpoint right at the entrance to these penultimate rooms. And it just puts the odds even more against you when fighting Robot Masters. Speaking of which, let's touch on these Robot Masters in detail. There's Bomb Man- oh, he's dead. There's Guts Man- oh, oh, he's dead too. Okay. There's Cut Man- really? He's already dead? Am I going to be able to finish any of these before- oh, and there goes the man. <sighs> okay, there's Popo from the Ice Climb- oh, dead. And, and then there's Fireman- yep, he's dead too. All of these masters suck. Mega Man as a series is designed around learning which boss powers do the most damage against certain robot masters and playing to that. For example, Rock Beat Scissors. Where's Paper Man? This game plays this rock, paper, scissors concept very straight, so each boss is wiped out almost immediately by his weakness and only by his weakness. Now I guess that gives you a bit of an excuse for those annoying rooms right before, but not really. I'd rather have competent boss design than artificial difficulty. Oh, and while we're on artificial difficulty, this game isn't programmed very well at all. Mega Man slides too much after every movement, so you never feel safe in platforming. There's that annoying platform fall thing that will kill you at least a dozen times per playthrough. There's rooms that I'm genuinely not sure how to beat correctly without cheesing the level. There's awful knockback that will kill you on tight platforming if you get hit. You can't switch weapons if your current shot is still active, leaving you a sitting duck sometimes. And then there's this. See, I got lucky here, but the game doesn't remove Robot Master attacks if you kill them after they fire a shot. I've died because of a stray shot like that before, and if you get killed before you collect that power up, you have to start the fight over. So the game has a lot of problems, yes, but there is a solid-ish template here. Each level has unique enemy designs which really complement- what? What the hell is that? I shot him and his legs exploded and now he's just arms and a face flying around? What? What? Other enemy designs are cool too, like this construction bot. These are called Mets, and they're in pretty much every classic Mega Man game. I guess you could say that one met his match. <laughs> I'm sorry. Then there are things like this. No, please, I'm just a boy. I don't want my hair cut. Please, no. These squid-ass enemy things, and a couple other cool ones. And the powers you get in Mega Man 1 are also pretty good, even though most of them are fairly situational. The only one really worth noting is the Elect Beam, since it's a vastly superior version of the Mega Buster with a lot of ammo. Now onto the Wily Castle. After you take down all six Robot Masters, Mega Man finds Wily's castle and brings the fight to him. Oh god, these things are at the start of the level? Please, no. Wait, 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 no, 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 there's more than one? No, please, no. 
<laughs> Why? These levels are hard, but nothing you can't handle if you're used to the mechanics by now. Except for this thing. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the yellow f devil. Without warning, he comes in with little blob pieces from the left side of the screen, and he'll materialize in a set pattern. Then you have about one second or so to shoot him in his eye, which also changes position sometimes, before he splits up again. His weakness is the elect beam, but it still takes about seven or eight shots to fully kill him. That's eight cycles of memorizing this pattern and having to perform it perfectly. And if you screw up too much, you're dead and you gotta start over. This is the embodiment of everything wrong with Mega Man 1. It's hard to be hard, not because it's designed well. And while I did have to beat him the old-fashioned way on the PS2 anniversary collection, the Legacy Collection on PS4 brought this back from the NES original. See, when you pause the game, all hitboxes both for you and your enemies are reset so attacks can hit multiple times if you use the in-game pause. I've done it without the trick, so I feel no shame in doing it with the trick. If they're going to design the game as poorly as they did, I'm going to play it as poorly as I can. But it doesn't even end there. In the next level, there's this room right here. If you happen to miss this thing I showed earlier, you're screwed. That right there is your final power-up, the Magnet Beam. It's hidden in Electman's stage, and you either need Gutsman or Electman's ability to get it. This shoots out floating platforms you can walk on and use to cheese past some obstacles. You cannot beat the game without it, but nowhere are you told this. Even if you do grab it, you need to shoot it exactly in specific places to get up. And if you screw up like you probably will the first time or two, you may run out of energy for the ability. But lucky you, the developers were nice enough to throw these tiny refills right here in the section right before. If you know the game is poorly designed, don't just throw us a tiny bone and pretend it's okay. Yes, it's better than nothing, but that's like saying shit flavored ice cream is better than no ice cream at all. Oh, and even better, if you're like me, you'll use the magnet beam in the exact room before, because those stupid desynced floating platforms from Iceman stage are back again, and they're surrounded by instant death spikes. F*** that. It's just poor decision after poor decision, and it's infuriating. It's why, if you're playing on PS4 through the Legacy Collection or on the Nintendo Virtual Console, I don't blame you for using save states at some points. Then you fight Copy Man, who's just a clone who uses the exact same weapon you do at any given point, except he does three times as much damage because poor game design. Then you go into the castle sewers to fight this thing, which by the way takes seven hits to kill, gets faster and faster, and is weak to Gutsman's power. Except there's only four rocks for you to grab in this level, and if you use one and then die, it's gone forever until you game over. So it's essentially be perfect again or f*** off. And then you go through the boss rush, another Mega Man staple. Here you only fight four of them in a row instead of all of them, because for some reason two of them are fought earlier in the level, but hey, I won't, I won't complain. And then you take down Dr. Wily's giant machine with his weakness, scissors. That's about all the ranting I can do about how awful this game can be at times. Like I said, it's a template, but it's not a good game by itself. It's got way too many problems to be considered anything close to a good game in my opinion. I'm sure I could go on for longer too, because there are so many little nuances that will show just how irritating this game can really be. But I'm gonna spare you the trouble. Bronze Bolt. This right here is the shining point of the game. It looks good and it sounds great. The music is wonderful and varied and it sells each level aesthetic really well. There's a reason Mega Man's known for its soundtrack and from even day one that has held true. The sound effects are well done as well. I've always loved how the Mega Buster makes such a puny sound because it really plays up how weak it can be at times and it really helps sell some weapons later in the game that do a lot more damage. It's something small I know but it's maybe one of the two or three things that they've definitively nailed from day one with the blue bomber. Graphically, there are some quirks, such as screen flickering when there's too many enemies on screen, but I really don't have too much of a problem with that in this game. It rarely appears, if ever, in Mega Man 1, and the sprites are so well done that I'll give it a pass here and there the few times it may occur. Every enemy, from the robot masters to the smallest grunts, is designed well and feels like it has a story. Some of them may be annoying to fight, yeah, but they ooze with charm. And the levels look gorgeous, too. Even for the NES era, these backgrounds can be really beautiful. That, combined with the soundtrack playing up whatever style any particular level is, just makes these levels feel that much more enjoyable even if the game itself infuriates me. The only time I'd ever go back to this game at this point is for the presentation, period. Since I'm reviewing this game from the Legacy Collection, I'm going to touch on some additional changes made available for the game. 
Now, I'll probably never review the actual Legacy Collection proper, so consider these a bonus, not something that affects the review of any particular game. For one, there's a database of every enemy in the game, showing its health, its damage, and its weaknesses, which is pretty cool. Then there's the option to play the game in three different aspect ratios, a few different filters to make it feel like you're playing on an old CRT, if you want that nostalgia kick, and the option to add a border showing old promotional art for each game. In this particular one, Roll has dead eyes and Dr. Delight has a stupid hole in his beard. Who grows a beard that fully and then leaves a tiny reverse soul patch? That's just weird. There's also a full music player for all the songs in the game. Like I said before, the visuals and audio of this game is the only saving grace for me. It's the only thing close to gold about Mega Man 1. Look, I'm not gonna stretch this review out. You already know how I feel about the game by now, and you can already tell that the cohesion's going to suffer. The finicky gameplay with the unrefined mechanics just doesn't match up to how polished it looks or sounds. I want to enjoy this game, I really do, but there's simply no way to enjoy it as a whole. I'd much rather put the soundtrack up and listen to it or something than play the game because it's just not a good game. Nothing about it comes together well, and it even feels sloppy when you look at the whole. I'm sorry, but this is just a bronze effort at best. I want to say this game's replayable, just to give it some kind of skill point. I really do, but it's got such a straight rock, paper, scissors gameplay that you really can't try different weakness chains or anything. That's where Mega Man gets its replayability from, trying different boss orders, seeing what works, what doesn't, and really experimenting. There's legitimately nothing else positive I have to say about this game. It's just a poor game, and not one I can recommend. If you want to experience Mega Man 1, queue up the soundtrack and read the comic. Seriously, that's the best way to experience this game. I'm sorry if you feel differently, and if you enjoy it, more power to you. But I cannot recommend this game to anybody in good conscience. Except for maybe the most hardcore of Mega Man fans that want to really see how it began. That's it. That's it for Mega Man 1. It's definitely a very, very flawed game, and it's honestly one, like I said, that I will probably never play again unless I absolutely have to. Now that said, it gets a hell of a lot better from here, so stick with it if you guys are just starting Mega Man 1. Or if you can, just don't, don't play Mega Man 1. So, next time you guys see me, I'll either be tackling Ratchet and Clank on the PS2, or Shamu's Deep Sea Adventures, also on the PS2. You can kind of see why I'm leaning one way here. So let me know how you guys feel about Mega Man 1 or the series in general in the comments below. And if you guys want, put a vote in. See if you guys want Ratchet and Clank or if you want me to hate myself, because that's those are the options here. It's either I'm going to play Ratchet and Clank or I'm going to hate myself. All right, guys, I'll see you later. I'm going to go thrash and smash my way to unlocking special powers. God.